So in this video, I want to talk about what makes Akino so beloved. I've talked about Rhea's grimery and her strengths and weaknesses, why she is so beloved in High School DxD, and I think a lot of it comes down to her character development, her growth, her strength and her judgment and her love towards not just Issei but also her other companions as well. And I think that complements really well to as a character that you can feel attached to. But Akino is a very different bit of a spark. She's definitely one of those characters in the early stages of the story is a girl that has a bit of distrust towards men but over time she kind of grows very attached to Issei and really enjoys flirting with him. And I think that's one of the first things that people draw to with Akino is her flirtatious manner. The way she has the back and forth with her and Rias. Their relationship is quite fun to watch, especially in the anime, where you're always seeing them kind of vie for Issei's affection and attention. And I think when you see that, it's just fun. So you're instantly going to gravitate towards either or either girl, which is why those two are the most popular in the anime. And I say the anime specifically because in the light novels there are definitely some moments for other characters to grow that are definitely become fan favorites. If you read the light novels then yeah, you'd understand example Ravel is definitely a big fan favorite amongst light novel readers and I will get into why she is so beloved in a later video. But what I'm pointing out is in the anime itself there is a lot of attention that goes into those two characters because of course that's what the source material has covered so far. But Akino as a character does grow throughout the anime as well. And the relationship between her and Issei has definitely built and grown. And Issei understanding why she has a distrust towards men. But also she is there to help Issei overcome his fear of women. Which is definitely a bit of a hot topic as well. Because I've talked about Issei's fear of women. And some high school DxD fans just don't want to admit that that is actually a story point. In the light novels and the anime and I think it's just more the fact that they try to put Issei on a bit of a pedestal that it, he doesn't need to be on. Issei is a great character in that he has his strengths and weaknesses, he has his ups and downs and he has his flaws. His weakness is the fact that he went for a pretty damn traumatic event which led him a little bit scared to kind of make those forward movements and I think those around him including Akino is one of those characters that allowed him to grow. And so you look at the aesthetics, aesthetics is absolutely a, a component of why people love characters. The hair, the flirtatiousness, the body, the curvatures, the Mount Everest's or the melons or the, the bubbling personalities on her chest. Those things are definitely a reason why, but it's not the only reason. And I think it's shallow to say that's the only reason, which I think most of us agree it isn't. I think what draws us to her is her flirtatious nature, her playful nature, but also the vulnerability in her as well, the fact that she is willing to be vulnerable to someone that she cares about and allow herself to grow and draw closer to an individual. And I think the relationship between her and Issei is something that grows and builds on, which is why a lot of these girls, yeah, definitely become fan favorites because as the story goes on, they all have their own moment to flourish, blossom, as the so to say. And Issei also complements that growth as well. There's little things that they both like complement each other. And Akino and Issei are two that definitely go through that moment in the anime. Now, later on in the light novels, there's definitely more moments for her, and definitely her flirtatiousness definitely does grow more, and she becomes a little bit more forthcoming on her trying to push more and more and more and she does have a bit of a sad backstory especially with the fact that her mother her father her anger and frustration towards her father and it takes a lot of time for her to reconcile that issue that she has with her father which is again another major component to her growth it's not just that she's got to grow towards other men but also the origin of where some of those issues come from and the fact that she has a bit of a past when it comes to her being an angel demon kind of having that bit of a hybrid in her and her showing that to Issei and also the fact that Issei has a bit of an issue or past history when it comes to fallen angels and Akano has some of that history built in so she's of course fearful of 
what Issei's response to that be. That's why I find her as a character so good, is because there are interesting kinks in her armor that you get to see get polished out. And I feel like High School DxD sometimes kind of just gets wrapped as only fan service. I know we all joke about the we come for the we come for the plot and we stay for the plot, but I do think there are some people that look at High School DxD and just go, "Oh yeah, it's just there for the fan service." Which sure, fan service is a major drawing component, but there is a lot of other layers to these characters, and I think Arkano gets a bit of a bad rap from an outsider's perspective looking in because of yeah her aesthetics but what's there not to love about that i mean damn she has a fine particular body and it's irresistible we've got to admit it we've got to admit it that it is irresistible at least for me but i think if you take that out there is such a good character there now you could argue well maybe we should remove some of that over the top idolize it like eye candy from her and it might make the personality shine more but i feel like that's more of someone looking for negatives and they're seeing fan service as a negative so that's the only thing they see i bring that up because it is a thing that is used sometimes as a sort of a throw on high school dxd and particularly rias and arcano because they do share very similar bubbly personalities on their chests and their sizes on that and so a lot of people from an outside perspective will go oh well high school dxd is all just about that because that's the only thing they want to look at and then they say well if you wanted people to take it more serious you should remove those things it's like no not necessarily i mean high school dxd its entire point is about you know the dds the double d's but there is so much more to the story and it is good to see other large content creators and small content creators pointing out that yes there is that plot but there is a lot more to it than just meets the eye. There is a many different interesting layers to the characters, and I think Arkano is one of those. And I think that is the reason why so many people love Arkano, is because, yeah, from an outsider's perspective, she's got the assets. She's got the tush-tush, the kadoosh, the, the kielbasas. But there is so much more to her. Such a sweet, innocent, caring flirtatious individual and she can flip between being very flirtatious very dominating in her personality and then just becomes like an innocent schoolgirl that's just wanting to find innocent love that's another thing about her is that way that she can go from those two and it's not like she's got multiple personalities disorder or something like that it's just the fact that yeah she can go from that very dominating has that very playful controlling manner of how she goes about flirting with Issei especially those moments in the room where where she's at the back and he's kind of getting pushed down and she's just like you know she likes you know an older man a bit bit of someone that can take control but also she likes to do the same back it's that dominating kind of effect and that's something that does get delved into later on in the story in the light novels and especially with the whip but then she flips to that innocent sort of schoolgirl kind of mindset of just finding innocent love that's what I love about her is the fact that she has those different layers to her and those different kind of personalities that she kind of has in her. I wouldn't say they flip like a switch, but they're just those moments where you can bring out the innocence in her. And that is why I absolutely love Akano from High School DxD. It's because of all those different components. And I'd love to ask the question off to you. What do you love about Akano? If you, do, if you do like her, if she's one of your favourites, or even if she isn't your favourite, what do you like about her? And what other characters do you like in the story, and why do you like them? Who's your favourite from the anime only's perspective, or from the light novel's perspective? And which other characters would you like me to talk about on the channel? So again, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.